UC San Diego, Division of Trauma, Surgical Critical Care and Burns, Surgical Procedures, Video Library, Diagnostic Peritoneal Lavage. The following video demonstrates an invasive surgical procedure which may result in harm to patients or healthcare providers and should only be performed by a medical professional. This video is not intended to be a substitute for clinical training. The University of California San Diego does not assume any responsibility or liability for any injury or damage to any person or property arising from the use of this video. By the end of the video, the participant should be able to number one, identify the indications and contraindications for DPL. Number two, describe the complications of DPL. Number three, describe the criteria for a positive DPL in the workup of both blunt and penetrating trauma. Indications. Diagnostic peritoneal lavage may be indicated in hemodynamically unstable patients following blunt trauma, particularly when FAST is unavailable. Patients with hemodynamically unstable pelvic fractures are the perfect example of patients who may benefit from a DPL or a diagnostic peritoneal aspiration which we will explain in further detail later on. At UCSD, patients with thoracoabdominal stab wounds, particularly to the left side, may be candidates for a DPL to rule a diaphragmatic injury. Similarly, patients with an anterior or flank stab wound who have undergone an inconclusive local wound exploration may also be candidates for a DPL to rule out intra-abdominal hemorrhage or injury. Hemodynamically stable patients with tangential gunshot wounds without clear indications for operative intervention may also benefit from a DPL. Equipment. DPL kit. Preparation. The patient should be placed in a supine position. For a right hand dominant surgeon, the operating surgeon should stand to the patient's left side. It is critical that the patient undergo Foley catheterization as well as NG tube placement to decompress the bladder and stomach respectively. Following decompression of the stomach and bladder and an adequate preparation and drape, either a supra or infra umbilical insertion site may be chosen. Indications for a supra umbilical insertion site include number one, patients with pelvic fractures, number two, patients with a lower midline surgical incision, and number three, patients in early pregnancy. Once again, these are relative and not absolute contraindications to an infra-umbilical DPL insertion site. Either a closed or open technique may be used. In this video, we shall demonstrate the closed Seldinger technique. Technical points. Following adequate local anesthetic, an 11 blade may be used to create an incision in the skin and subcutaneous tissues followed by insertion of the DPL needle and catheter directed at a 45 degree angle at the left lower quadrant. Resistance will be encountered as the needle traverses the fascia and once again when penetrating the peritoneum. This may be felt as a pop. Upon entry into the peritoneal cavity, it is important to aspirate possible contents within the intra-abdominal cavity. If more than 10 cc's of frank blood or enteric contents are returned, this meets criteria for a positive diagnostic peritoneal aspiration and the procedure is terminated at this point 
and the patient transferred to the operating room for an exploratory laparotomy, provided that the diagnostic peritoneal aspiration is negative at this point, one liter of warmed isotonic crystallite solution may be infused in the patient's abdomen. In the case of a pediatric patient, 10 cc's per kilogram of warmed isotonic solution may be instilled. It is important to use the tubing that is provided with the DPL kit, as this tubing does not contain any valves or checks, which will allow for the uninterrupted free flow of fluid from the patient's abdominal cavity back into isotonic crystalloid bag. It is important to ensure that air is not introduced into the system, and it is equally important and vital that there be a continuous fluid column maintained during the entirety of the procedure. It is recommended that the entire one liter not be instilled into the abdominal cavity. At approximately the 900 cc mark, the bag may be gently placed on the floor below the level of the patient's abdomen, at which point, um, ideally, the entirety of the infused volume would be returned. At minimum, 75% of the infused crystalloid solution should be returned to the one liter crystalloid bag. Diagnostic criteria. In patients sustaining blunt trauma, the DPL may be either grossly or biochemically positive, provided that there is no evidence of gross blood, enteric contents, provided that there is no return of blood or enteric contents, fluid from the DPL should be sent to the lab for biochemical analysis. In the setting of blunt trauma, greater than or equal to 100,000 RBCs per millimeter cubed, greater than 500 WBCs per millimeter cubed, define a biochemically positive DPL. In the setting of penetrating trauma, 1,000 RBCs per millimeter cubed or 500 WBCs per millimeter cubed are considered positive and mandate operative exploration. Complications. A number of complications may accompany DPL insertion if performed incorrectly. These include but are not limited to catheter misplacement, hemorrhage, intra-abdominal or retroperitoneal organ injury, as well as wound infection at the site of DPL insertion. Summary. DPL may be a useful adjunctive diagnostic test in patients sustaining both blunt and penetrating injury to the torso. Preparation and decompression of the stomach and bladder are important steps to prevent iatrogenic injury to these organs. Knowledge of the different diagnostic criteria based on mechanism of injury are required in order to successfully perform and interpret the results of a DPL. Once again, thank you for joining us. My name is Dr. Dennis Kim with the UC San Diego Division of Trauma, Surgical Critical Care and Burns.